Let's get right to it, starting with the South Florida Congresswoman who got into a verbal spat this week with Fox's Tucker Carlson. Miami Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar likes to mix it up, so does Fox's Tucker Carlson, and there were fireworks when she went on his show Wednesday night. It was a verbal sparring match. Back and forth they went. He wanted to know why she supports a no-fly zone in Ukraine and why she isn't worried about possibly setting off World War III. She said the U.S. has to stand up to bullies like those in Cuba and Venezuela. And the congressman from Miami now joins us live from West Palm Beach, where she made an appearance this morning. Congresswoman, great to see you. How are you? Doing well. Wonderful to be with you always. You know how much I respect you. That's why I'm here this early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always good to see you, too. We've known each other for roughly 30 years. Uh, all right. I think yes. the, the beginning, the opening question here has to be is that you told this outfit, the gray zone in Washington, that you supported a no-fly zone. And you sort of said you wanted to clarify that with Tucker Carlson. Do you support a no-fly zone in Ukraine? Michael, what I support is not, is not to take the no-fly zone off the table. Because when you are telegraphing or you're telling tyrants what is it that you're going to do or not do, then you embolden them. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Look at, look at those images. We are the, the, the free world, the international community is uh, witnessing the decimation of a whole country that did not provoke Russia. Yeah. We well, know what so, Vladimir Putin means. Right. But so, so what you are saying is, let's not say we will never use a no-fly zone or impose one, of course. you know, so that we have at least a whole, a, a whole card that we could play if it came to that. But on the other hand, the Pentagon, the president, most members of Congress with you say that a no-fly zone would be a provocation that would cause World War III and possibly cause Putin to unleash nuclear weapons. What's your answer to that? And, uh, and I understand, and that is very true, and I think the Biden administration is trying. Uh, hasn't shown the leadership that I would like them to show, but what they're trying is not to incur or not to get into World War III. Of course, we know that. No one wants to go to another war. But then at the same time, we are the leaders of the free world. We need to be leading the way, and we need to be yeah. sending messages, very strong messages to Vladimir Putin, that he needs to stop the carnage, well, but something isn't that, that he hasn't. Uh, we understand, in the last but few isn't hours, that, let me just... Isn't that, I'm sorry, isn't yeah. that exactly what President Biden has been doing for the last four weeks? He rounded up all the members of NATO, the European Union. You know, the, the allies are stronger right now, NATO's stronger than it's been in decades. And they are all lined up against Putin. And Joe Biden had a big role in doing that, didn't he? Too late. We should have given the javelins, the stingers, the MiGs 29s, the S 300s, the X 400s to S 400s to the Ukrainians months ago when we knew that they were they were gathering all those 200,000 troops around the Ukrainian border. I'm not saying that now we're running, but, but Putin is dictating the terms. Let me just tell you, and I'm sure you know about this, they just dropped, the Russians dropped at the hypersonic yeah. missile. First time in the history of the world, first time in a war that a, that a power throws, and, and for those that have not read up on it, those are very high, high-speed missiles, right. 4,000 miles per hour very difficult to shoot them down so what are we going to do if that continues what are we going to do we meaning the free world the united states if vladimir putin decides to throw a chemical weapon at the ukrainians yeah. what are we going to do well and that's the big well, question that, and, well, that, and is, that question has been posed to yeah. other lawmakers yeah. and they have been saying well let's see maybe maybe then we will impose a no-fly zone why should we wait for that minute. You and I know, and the audience that is watching me, which is so dear to me because that's home, your audience and my constituents, we know that when you blink in front of a tyrant, things get very complicated. So yeah. it's better well, to send the right yeah. message yeah. right from the get-go that we're not going to play ball with you. And that's not what happened with this administration. I'm not saying that it's an easy position 
but I do say that we are the leaders of the free world. Why can we send the MiGs 29s that Zelensky begged us to yeah. Congress to send him mm. yeah. a few, few days ago? Yeah. Why aren't we sending more drones, the Turkish drones? Why aren't we doing well, more? We, Why we, the CIA in fact, cannot yeah, it, it, excuse this, me, but in fact, this? In fact, Tell I me. mean, I, I have read uh, that, you know, of the $800 million worth of military aid the president authorized late this week, in addition to the $14 billion going to Ukraine, that there is a, a wide variety, including surface-to-air missile uh, systems and drones and all kinds of equipment. Uh, I mean, I think that the administration seems to be doing its best and has been at this kind of task ever since Russia seized Crimea in 2014. Not enough. Otherwise... Vladimir Putin would have not invaded in such a ruthless way what he's doing. He would have not invaded uh, uh, Ukraine. We, I, I do believe that if we would have sent the right messages right before the invasion, probably he would have thought about it twice. Why don't we send the MiGs? Why don't we allow the, the Polish to, to give the MiGs to the Ukrainian pilots? Zelensky said it. And Zelensky asked for the no-fly zone. I understand the repercussions. I understand that that's a very big word. But at the same yeah. time, we cannot take that off the table. Yeah. All right. Well, when you were speaking with Tucker Carlson the other night, you said just give Zelensky the MiG-29s because his pilots know how to fly those planes. They don't know how to fly American Correct. jet fighters. But, Russian. you know, the Pentagon says, how do you get those MiGs to Ukraine? Do you send them through some intermediate U.S. base? or NATO base in Germany? I mean, that's just simply a fig leaf. Putin would know where those planes came from, and he would consider that an act of aggression. Oh, but he can consider an act of aggression what we're sending right now. The javelins, the stingers, all the, the, all the, uh, the military equipment that you just mentioned that was in the $800 million uh, uh, military aid to Ukraine. So he could consider, the thing here is that, and I'm glad that you, you point this out, is that now Vladimir Putin could consider anything or nothing a military provocation. So why not the new stingers? Why not the, why can we then say to him, this hypersonic missiles that you have been launching in the last hours, uh, this is a provocation against NATO. You see, this is all perception and not reality. And if you read all the analysis, it's like the, 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 the whole administration is trying to figure out what would Vladimir Putin think that it's a provocation and escalatory, which is now, you know, is the word in fashion, the escalatory. Only Vladimir Putin will determine that. And that's the game we cannot fall into because then the tyrant, the, the, these uh, thugs are the ones dictating to the free world how to behave. Yeah. In the meantime, look at the Ukrainians. And, you know, we Cubans, uh, I feel that we're all Ukraine, and I'm sure you do too, Michael, because going back to your audience, Cubans know what the Russians do. The Russians well, penetrated yeah. Cuba silently. They're well, doing we it do. vociferously in no, Ukraine. We remember it's the, the same Cuban, penetration. Yeah, we, it's the same we, wanting to steal everything believe from Believe me, you. you don't need to remind us of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, I lived through it. I remember it. I mean, it, it, the world came that close to nuclear war. Uh, and thank God it didn't. And what they're trying to do now is prevent it. But, but why did fact, that happen? Because uh, JFK blinked during pay of pigs. And that's why Fidel said, oh, this is not a bad opportunity for me to put some missiles on that little island. And, that's, and I agree that at that time, thank God we did not have a missile, a, missile, um, a, a nuclear yeah. war. But that's what happens when you blink. And right now, and I believe that I think we should well, mention this. Well, is Biden sure blinking? It, are you if saying that Joe world Biden yeah, believe you know, that this Marie may Elvira be the last is, confrontation with yeah. it? Yeah. Are you saying? Are you yes. saying that Joe Biden is somehow blinking right now? You know, before Vladimir Putin. Is he I blinking? I think that Vladimir Putin feels that that Joe Biden is a weak, is a weak leader, and that we waited too long to act. I do believe, and many people in Congress believe the same thing, that if months ago, when we saw the surge of Russian troops around the Ukrainian border, 
if we would have said to Zelensky, what is it that you need? We're going to give it to you. Probably, probably we would not be in this situation and the Ukrainians would not have four million, not only the dead and the carnage. You've seen those images. No, it's, it makes you sick. It makes is. you sick. And no, how do you think we feel the House Foreign Affairs Committee? Yeah. Knowing that we are the free world, how do you think I feel? I'm very good friends with Victoria Sparks. And we became friends at the beginning of the term and because she lived socialism and my parents lived it. So we have something in common. We know what socialism, Marxism, communism does to people, destroys them. So that's what that's the reason there's, there's I got nobody, elected and you, you know, know that. There, there's nobody I there's nobody a group around of here. That have nobody that we skin. know there's nobody that we know who's gonna say a good word on behalf of socialism or communism or Marxism Marxism. Right. So uh, Maria Elvira Salazar, hold your place, don't go away. We've got more questions for you in just a minute. We're glad you're with us uh, this morning. We are speaking with Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar, Republican, who represents the 27th Congressional District, most of Miami along the coast and Miami Beach. Congresswoman, yeah. you, just, you just said that President Biden has been weak. Uh, he did call uh, Putin a war criminal this week. He gave him, gave Zelensky $14 billion, you know, in aid. Uh, what more, what could he do to show that he is not weak? I think I, we answered this before. He should have shown resolve way before uh, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. Well, he I was sounding the alarm. Another type uh, well, hold of on. He, hold on, I'm sorry. You know, for a month, five, six weeks before the invasion, uh, the American intelligence actually did a phenomenal job they said Russia is going to invade. Uh, you know, Mr. Biden talked to all the NATO countries. They doubted the truth of that. They didn't think he was going to invade. But the alarm was sounded by Joe Biden, and they were sending in uh, armaments to Ukraine. So it's not as if he sat back and did nothing. Michael, I love your opinion, but I have <laughs> sat in different and I respect it, and I respect you highly as a journalist. That's why I'm here for two segments. But I, def I do not agree with what you just said. I sat at different classified briefings, which obviously I cannot share with you the info. But I can share with you the spirit or the perception that I walked out of from those briefings is that we, the United States, were acting very weakly. Right. We could well, have done a lot more. We yeah. could have sent the message. We could have sent more, like I said, more military yeah. weaponry, All right. Right? Well, equipment, I, you know, armament to that border with Poland, with Romania and Turkey. Yeah. We could have beefed it up a big time and then send the message to Vladimir Putin, be careful, because look what I just amassed around your house. Yeah. But and the, I just want to say something else about the no-fly zone, and I do understand, and I'm not a warmonger. I believe that is peace through strength. Uh, the the no-fly zone has been established three times in history, and it has worked the three times. Because when the thugs know that they're going to be confronting the leader of the free world, they think about it twice. Yeah, but and wait I a minute. You if and they, I post if, you, and I leave right, you with so, this question. So, what are well, we going to do as the United States, right, the leader so, of the free world, wait a, wait a minute, Vladimir right, Putin peace, sent, uh, sent peace, a chemical weapon against Excuse the, me, the Congresswoman. Peace through strength. What should happen if a NATO jet, whether it's French or Italian or from Holland or the United States, goes up in the no-fly zone, encounters a Russian jet fighter, and they get into a dogfight, and our plane is shot down or we shot down the Russians. You know, isn't that really... What about the, the opposite? Isn't that the beginning what about the opposite? of what World about War Three? No. It's of not? Of course, but then what, let me, let me put... Now, what I'm saying is that I understand that's a possible scenario. What about this other scenario? What about if Vladimir Putin hears the message and doesn't fly any more planes? You think he's going to shrink back? I mean, do you three? honestly think oh. Vladimir Putin is going to say, oh, my goodness, they've got their jets up there. I'm just not going to fly mine in there any, anymore. 
your, your guess is as good as the Biden administration. No one really knows, but I do know that the empirical evidence shows, that history shows, that the last three times, the only three times a no-fly zone has been imposed, it has worked. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, Congresswoman, and you are a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, so you are privy to information journalists don't have, and I acknowledge that. What is the end game here? Uh, Zelensky spoke to you and other members of Congress this week. He asked for armaments. He asked for humanitarian help. He asked for a no-fly zone. But his, his people are now negotiating, uh, reportedly, having peace talks with Russian counterparts. Uh, what should be the end game here for him? And what should the United States do to help uh, stop the fighting? I believe, and this is my own personal opinion, that whatever Zelensky negotiates, we should honor. They are the ones under the bullets, not us. We should help them. And if they believe that they need to negotiate and those are the terms of the agreement, so be it. Again, that's a hypothetical question. So what we know right now is that the Russians are sending the hypersonic missiles. We know that Zelensky does not have the MiG-29s. We know that he doesn't have the drones that he needs from Turkey. We know that the CIA could be doing the same thing that the military convoy, that we could be sending more armaments that yeah. we are not doing right now, what we did in Afghanistan. So there are still a few different things that we can do it from the military point of view that we are not doing because the Biden administration fears the escalatory mode or he doesn't want escalate, which I understand, but that's yeah. a very thin line. Okay. And I, could, but I thought we were going to talk about immigration. Well, I'm sad to say that we are out of time. I want to say you are the next sponsor time. of the Dignity Bill. And the next time you're with us, we will talk about the bill. Appreciate your time this morning very much. All right. Maria, My love to you and the audience. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> you're quite welcome.